Okay, this is for the Chicago Fair. Um, third try. <laughs> I had problems. Anyways, let's start off with something that um, interesting. Uh, this is going to be extended basic. This is RxB. All right. So first thing I want to do is I want to show you something. Uh, there's a program called Cantina. So we have old. And uh, Cantina is nothing more than a, it's four. There we go. It's just a extended basic program that plays Cantina song from Star Wars. And then RxB, what I did was I said, okay, how come it takes two files to do what I can do in one file? So I tried to figure out a way to make it do one file. Well, the thing is the lack of memory on the TI. So to fix that, I have a command called call PRAM. You'll see RxB has videos of PRAM, a few, like three now. What PRAM does is it modifies the lowest and the highest address in the 24K. So you can tell Extended Basic you want more memory or less memory. If you want Extended Basic to only have, let's say, 4K memory, you can do that. And there's demos on that. Uh, I did videos. Anyway, so if we go minus one, that says that I want uh, the memory to be at FFFF. And then in minus 24576, this would tell um, Extended Basic that I want the memory to be at A000. So if we go size, now this is RxB's size for 2020, so it tells you quite a bit more. But anyways, it says the memory for the stack is right there. But look at this. See the memory for the program bytes? That's not normal, is it? That's quite a bit more. That's because we're using from FFF. Normally it would be at, uh, what is it, FE, F was FFE7, which would normally would be. And then uh, it's normally at AO40, so I've added 40 hexadecimal bytes. Well, it's more than 40 because it's 16-bit. So anyway, so it's A00 instead of A040. So I've had quite a little bit of memory. So if we go old disk one, and the program is Cantina. Well, RxB Cantina. Whoops, old disk one. Okay, it's loaded. So if we run both of these and put a timer on them, if you run them both at the same time, RxB beats it by, beats it by about 15 seconds. But as you can see, RxB loaded the screen instantly because it's all one program versus this. So I was just going to do a demo of that, but I don't think I want to wait for the song to start. It takes forever. So let's reset memory here. Make sure it's reset. Yep, it's back to normal. So anyways, uh, we'll do the same thing here. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go to the next step. Let's try uh, call files. So in regular extended basic, we have call files. And let's say zero. Oh, nothing changed. Everything's exactly the way it normally is. If we do a call files here in RxB, I've rewritten a um, version of Rx. Oops. What did I do that? Oh, call files. As you can see, what I've done is uh, you've got more stack. I had to write a new routine for zero because there, zero is not allowed in the disk controllers or anybody else. So I had to override the whole thing. So now you have a call file zero. It gives you more VDP memory. So if you need a few more or bytes of VDP memory in a program and you don't have access to disk, now you can do that. Uh, here's another one. Let's go call files in XB. Let's do 15. It can't do that. It can't do more than a certain number. I think it's 13 as high as you can go. Now in RxB, if you want to extract, you want to have up to 15 files. There you go. 
there's not a lot of memory left. I mean, you got you only got um, you only have five, six, two, four bytes of stack free and program space available now. And it shows you the memory address change. It's at one f eight f. It's the first free address. Uh, it goes from no, you know, 0958 up to that. So yeah, you've lost quite a bit of memory. Anyways, that's one of the things you can do in RxB. So anyways, nothing changed here for Extended Basic. I mean, it didn't do either one of them, so it just crashed. So we've done that. Let's go to the next one. Uh, let's go to um, let's go to Joystick or yeah. Well, let's do this uh, first off. See, if you run a program and you want so many files open, you have to do this. You have to call files. Yeah, well, let's say three is normal, but we'll just say call files. And then you have to do a new. Then you can run the program, like disk, you know, file, program, whatever the program is. Well, that's what you normally have to do in Extended Basic. In RxB, you can just do this call xb, and then you can put in the name of the program you want to run. Like, let's say uh, this program here, like coincidence. Let's say disk1, C O N C. And we're going to tell it we want to open three files. Now you can do three files, one file, four files, it doesn't really matter, it doesn't care. Well, I've already showed that. But what this does is this does the this does for you the call files first, three, then it does a new for you automatically, then it runs the program. There it goes. Oops, four. Okay, so here's the program. Let's do the same thing in XB. Um, the first part is extended basic. Now, the idea is to run this program for one hour and then compare the X and just print out the X if you do it. Or if you want it for seven hours, well, I don't care. Just run it for a while while it counts up the X, X, X plus one. And this will tell you how many times the, the routine's executed. Now, in normal extended basic, you get a call coincidence all, then you have a call coincidence, then a call coincidence, call coincidence. Now, notice that each one's on a line number. This means that when you run the program, you have to go back to the subprogram search, find call coincidence, and start over again each time it does this. That's the subprogram search. In RxB, what it does is a call coincidence, it just looks at a comma, and it goes to the next command. It doesn't have to go back to the, the interpreter, look for another line number, Look for the name of the command and then run that command. So you're going to get you're going to get better numbers at X. In other words, the number of coincidences you're going to get are going to be a lot more than you would get from Extended Basic. So if you run the program, this one you run from two two hundred, and here you go. Now you're also going to get something else here. You're going to see if you watch this long enough. You won't see extended basic do all four minus ones when it makes a coincidence all four times. You're going to see the number of four of them at a time over here on RxB a lot more often. And the reason why is because it's doing quicker checks on coincidence. Just run this for a while, then check to see if they're the same. That's proof enough. So we've done that. Uh, let's try another one. For distance, hold disk 1. And we'll go over here and do this. This will improve your extended basic programs because they're, they're compatible. They're the same program names. They're the same, it's XB. Uh, also, RxB runs TI basic, which you can't do in XB. Well, you can, but not very many programs. RxB runs, I've only found two programs that won't work in RxB. One of them uses something illegal that shouldn't even be used in the first place. It's just a quirk of a, a TI basic. Uh, and then the other one is a, was basically the same kind of problem. And then a third problem we had, I fixed. You can't do it anymore, it won't work. In Extended Basic, it'll just crash. In RxB, it'll, it'll, say, it'll say error, that you, you committed an error. You can't do that. Uh, anyways, let's go back. We'll just do this. We're going to run this one. 
It's going to do the distance, and then we're going to run. I think it's two twenty. Oh, what is it? What did I do wrong? Oh, it can't run it. I have to do this. Call two hundred. Run two hundred. There we go. So, anyways, uh, it's the same kind of thing. Run it for an hour and look at the distance difference. And we're going right back to the same problem we had before, which was that extended basic on a distance, if you look at it, you see the distance? It has to run the line number each time. That means it has to go find distance in the list of subprograms and then run it. This takes time to do. There's no way you can just jump to a new line number. First, you have to search for the next line number. Then you have to go load and find that distance name. Then you have to run the program. RxB just yeah, a comma. It, it's in the same routine. It's in the distance program right there. It never left. It just GPL just jumps to the next thing, which is a comma. It looks for either a bracket or a comma, and it goes to the next command. So it's going to run faster. There's no way around that. That's why that X increases each time. Faster in RxB. And proof of that is how long we run? Just a minute or so. Print X. 496. Print X. 427. Now, I started this a long time before RxB, and it almost caught it. <laughs> I mean, like, this was running quite a while before I started over here. And it almost caught it. That's a big difference. So, yeah, it's, it's collecting a lot better data. Run for an hour, it's huge. I mean, it's like, uh, I think there's like 800 difference or something like that after a couple hours. Anyways, uh, let's go to the next demo. Uh, I have, what's here? We have uh, the next thing. I guess we're going to go with magnify. So, oh, this one. Magnify. There's the program. Okay, what it's doing here is it's throwing up sprites. This won't run extended basic because extended basic doesn't have a comma that you can put in here and change magnification factors back and forth. So it's just going to call magnify one, two, one, which is magnification one, two, then one, and it just goes back to 115 and starts over again. Extended basic, of course, will crash because you can't do that. As you can see, you're looking here, you see both magnified and unmagnified sprites on the same screen at the same time. I thought this would be a cute addition you could do to uh, AXB programs. You don't have to do it quite this fast. You can only do it once in a while to make something indicate something. It'll make it big, then jump it back down again. Uh, you can do it a single sprite, or you can do it, you know, a whole bunch of sprites. Take your pick. But it, it is a factor you could use. Normally, people have done this by just say call magnify, then go back and call magnify again. I've seen loops like that, so I just built it into RxB. I thought it'd be a good idea. By the way, it was already in RxB 2015. <laughs> I just forgot to include documentation on it. Uh, let's go new here, new here. All right, uh, next on the agenda would be, um, we did coincidence, we did distance, files. Okay, uh, let's do joy motion. Now, old this one, this is going to be for XB balloons. And hold this one, and it's RxB balloons. Oh, it's just balloons. And this. Okay, so what's the difference between these two programs here? I guess what we'll do is we'll just go look at them this way. So, first off, we have in regular extended basic, we have like call joystick, tt equals one, display at, coincidence, all, c, and then it does this, you know, and then it does a call motion down here, so we call coincidence. That's extended basic. And over here, in RxB, what we have is a thing called, oh, where do you go, where do you go, there it is. Over here, what we have is called joy motion. And what it does is, this is pretty cool. What it does is it does joystick one, and then you have your X and Y like you normally would. 
Then it also has number one sprite. That's the sprite we're going to be using in jaw joy motion. And then we have, we have a pixel number. Like in motion, you would do this. So anyways, that's the number of pixels it moves. So it's similar to the extended basic, but what I've got here is basically call joystick, call key, because it also does the fire detect key also. Not only joystick, but also fire. And it goes, if there's a, uh, a button pressed, then now go to it, the end can be included on joy motion. I don't have that here. And then it also does an if then else for that go to. So it also does a call motion. So it does all that in one command. What's the difference? Well, let's take a look. This is regular standard basic. Put the gamepad over here. Hit enter. And let's move it around a bit. Okay, here we go. There's a right there. Come on, come on. There we go. Catch it, catch it, catch it. Can I get it? Yep. Yeah. And where'd it go? There it is. Can't catch it. As you can tell, the joystick is a little slower because it <laughs> one of the problems is one of the big problems with with extended basic is it has multiple commands and I've built everything into one command. So if we go over here and run it, let's see how fast this is. Well, as you can see the the response time is much quicker. So Joy Motion in RxB, what you do is just find your extended basic programs with, with motion inside them along with joystick and you can speed it up considerably. As you can see it does work. Um, stop this program, stop this program. Let's try a different one. I'll get another one here. Um, how about um, I got RxB Lemon and you know I only got RxB Lemon. I don't have the other one. So this is RxB Lemon, where you can use the joystick, and you can wait for it to put the script up on screen. <laughs> it's going to take a second. It is extended basic. Anyways, so... I think it's trying to add, you know, I initialize something. I don't know why it's working. 550, what's it doing? It's doing a call peak for something. I don't know why it's working, and I really don't care at the moment. It wasn't that important. I didn't test it. I just ran it uh, a year ago, so my own fault. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Other than one thing what I've been doing lately is what I've been doing is um, I'm trying to make it so what you can do is you can run a program. So the idea is I want to be able to go to do this. If you have a program let's say you have an extended basic program and using SAMS what I want you to be able to do is load a bunch of a program which one with a line number right and the idea is that at a, at a if you do a, a, a call SAMS you can swap out that portion of memory from that line number down and use the same line numbers in the program to add more lines to your extended basic program so it'd be a little bit like using a subroutine where you go call sub but the idea was to use the same line numbers. As long as you don't add new variables to it, you could have a, you know, one meg uh, extended basic program. It just keeps adding more lines in every time you swap out that 4K in SAMS. 
I do have the SANS demo. Uh, what would I call that thing? I think it's on disk one. Uh, old disk one SANS demo. Is that what it is? Yeah, SANS demo. All it's going to do is it's going to go to disk. Um, it's going to go to disk five. It's going to load. Now what this payload does is okay. That's the address to load. Like the addresses are going to be like at two thousand, three thousand, uh, A, B, on. You know C, D, E, B, E, F. Now these are boundaries in in a, set, a hexadecimal for where you load your memory. So it's going to be two three. A, B, C, D, E, F, where you want to load that 4K page in SAMS. Uh, so I've changed it to a 4K page. It used to be 8K. And it's going to be doing that. It loads those pages into the SAMS memory at these pages. So it's call SAMS that 2000. That's the page number you're going to put in there. It's using P. And then what it's going to do is it's going to cycle through all of them. I've run this demo many times, so I'll run it one more time. All it's doing right now is it's loading off of disk. If you go to disk, what is it, disk 4? No, disk uh, 5? Yeah, there it is. It's loading the pages right there, one at a time. Uh, and it's loading them into the SAMs. First it puts them into the SAMs, then it puts them on the screen by using that move command that I, I showed you. Uh, it's in the command here. If we look at the SAMs demo. You can see here what it's doing is it's loading it. Then it moves from RAM, which is the lower 8K, into video, 2079 bytes, from lower 8K, 8192, to video screen. Now, this is cycling through on SANS. This is all in memory. It's cycling through each one of these screens. Now, by the way, it's, you know, it's 4K at a time. It's swapping out. Do you think that's fast enough? SAMS is pretty quick. It's, it's not any faster than regular memory, but it is swapping up 4K at a time. It only takes like a, clock, a few clock cycles to do it. So it's pretty quick. I think it's pretty useful. But I want to be able to do this with extended basic programs where you can make a line number. The trouble is that that line number has to be exactly on the boundary, otherwise you're going to have a problem. I suppose you could be outside the boundary, but it's going to mess up the program if it goes to the pro for the line number that doesn't fit. Anyways, this is a short demo I want to do with RxB to show you what 2020 is coming out and to demo the things that I can do. There's a lot of other features I haven't even touched on that I've added to RxB since then. Uh, there are videos out there you guys can watch. So have fun at the fair, and we will talk to you guys later. Bye.